you're ready to go camping, you've planned all these delicious menus for the weekend, now you're packing up, and how do you get it to camp, and how do you keep it safe from all the animals that also want to eat your delicious food? Well, if it needs refrigerated, it definitely needs to be in a cooler. You need to make sure that you've got enough ice to keep it cool for the whole weekend, or as long as your camping trip is. If you're going to be gone for a long time and don't have access to ice, then you need to consider that for your menu. Maybe you can pre-cook some materials, or you can always use backpacking food, which is dehydrated, and then you just have to add water. So it's things to consider. But in this picture, we've got our cooler full of our food for the weekend. Now, what about the things that don't need to be in an ice chest? Well, you can put a plastic tub and store your food in there. All your dry ingredients, your cans, your pasta, your chips. Sometimes a plastic tub is a great way to do that and you can put a lid on it. So when you're trying to store it at night, you can put it in a closed container. It will reduce the smells and scents that other animals can pick up. And if you put some things on top of it, it'll keep it safe. The other thing is you might have your own kitchen that you bring with you or a chuck box as we like to call it. And this is a picture of one of those and you can store your pots and pans, your seasonings, your aluminum foil, even some dishes if you want in your chuck box. And it makes a nice surface to cut and prepare your food on. The other thing is if you're in an area where there are bears, you need to be prepared for that. So this is just a bear box at a national park and you'll see these where they've provided you something to store your food in at your campsite. And they have a handle and they open up and you can see you can put your ice chests, all your plastic tubs, and anything that has a scent of food in there where it'll stay safe from all sorts of critters, raccoons to your friendly bear. And here's another one of hanging a bear bag if you're going camping a little bit more remotely where they don't have any bear boxes prepared for you. So one way to keep your food safe is to actually hang it from a tree and this is called a bear bag. So I'm going to show you how we do that. So I tied a long piece of rope to the end of this stick and now I'm going to throw it up over a branch and make a bear bag. Here we go. So sometimes it takes a couple tries and the important thing to know is if I'm putting a bear bag up here I want to make sure nobody's in the vicinity because if I miss that stick could hit them so I don't want them to be hit by a stick. So nobody's around. That goes right on over. Now some people will tell you to put a shoe to the end of the rope. Don't do that because if that stick or that shoe gets stuck in the tree, you'll be in trouble. All right, now we're gonna let this down and tie our bear bag, so we'll be back. All right, so we wanna make sure all our food is in the backpack or whatever's going in the tree. Now, if you're in an area with a lot of bears, you might wanna use even your cooking clothes in a backpack and hang that in the tree because you don't want anything that smells like food in your tents. So that's an important thing to know is how many, how the likelihood of running into bears really is. So I've got my food in this backpack, now I'm going to hang it up. Now, when you're hanging it, you want to make sure that it's at least six feet above the air, okay? So it's kind of my height and my reach, so a bear might have a hard time getting this. So we want to make it a challenge or hopefully out of his way. So that works for that. Now I don't want to go all the way to the top because there's other critters like raccoons or possums that can climb these trees and if it's right there at the branch, then they can scratch and reach in and get your food too. So you want it down so the people that can climb trees can't get it, 
as well as out of reach for any hungry bear or person. So then, once it's at that height, you're gonna take your rope and take it around the tree and tie it there. Tying my bear bag to the tree. Now I have a few other perishables that I've got in this ice cooler. You wanna make sure your lid closes really tight and usually put something heavy on it. So that could be a folding chair or rocks or a cast me. iron or a person like my son, Owen. Um, but he probably doesn't want to stay out there all night. So you want something heavy on that because this you are trying to um, prevent raccoons or anybody opening and getting in this. So if it doesn't have anything, sometimes some animals are pretty smart and they can open this. So you want to put some weight on here to make it harder for them to do that. The other thing is you want to make sure that you don't have any food in your tent. So we talked about that with the bear bag and if you have cooking clothes, even hanging up your cooking clothes in the trees if you're in bear territory. But uh, if you're not in bear territory, you still want to make sure that no food whatsoever or scented food is in your tents because even raccoons like to chew on tents and they'll get inside and get your snacks. So that's pretty much it for food storage. That's two tries for little clipper. <laughs> you can cut this any time. I don't know. Uh, whoa, that's pretty good. That's not the limb I was shooting for. But this is an example. Peanut's going to try and do this too. Yes. So some people think it's a good idea to throw a shoe in the tree for their bear bag. This is why you don't do that. Ooh. Peanut was going to tell you about this, but Little Clipper has decided to illustrate that for us. Yeah. This so is now you know to. how to get your shoe stuck in a tree, and you but need, at least it's safe from a bear. And you need 